Don't worry, I'm not crazy. At least, I don't think so. I killed a human being. A human being. I was weak. That's why I needed you. Needed you to punish me for my sins. That's all over now. I know the truth. Now it's time to end this. I guess I really don't care if it's dangerous or not. I'm going to town either way. This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there eating pizza? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Daily here, and welcome to episode 14 of the Codec, our interview with Guy Sehe. How you doing this morning, sir? Hello, Clayton. I'm well. Hey, nice. fellas. How's it going? <laughs> nice to have you here. As always, joined by my two co-hosts, Corrupt Ronan. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Corrupt Ronan here, also known as that one black guy. Thank you guys for joining me today. I always appreciate it. Thank you to, uh, to Guy here for joining us as well. It's a pleasure to talk to you, sir. And Thank Yong, you. yeah. What's up, everybody? It's Yong here, and welcome to our interview with Guy Sihi. I'm also known as that one Asian guy, by the way. And uh, <laughs> it's awesome to have you here, Mr. Sihi. And uh, we can't wait to dive into uh, all the work that you have done for us in, in the gaming industry. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, fellas. Sure. All right. And Yong, I actually believe uh, you're going to open up uh, today's questions. Yes. Um, so we always like to start with this question. Just tell us a bit about yourself. Who is Guy Sihi and how did you get into voice acting and how did you eventually end up playing the role of James Sunderland in uh, Silent Hills 2? Oh, I started acting when I was just uh, uh, a teen, actually. Hmm. And I was uh, acting in school like uh, those kids, you know, who like to be in the sh school shows. I did that a lot. And I, then my I'm father, <laughs> yeah, my father made um, documentary films about the soapbox derby, which I, I built a car and raced in. So I, those films became fairly popular. He made a series of them, and uh, they were circulated back to uh, schools on 16 millimeter film back in the, the 70s. So I... Uh, and 80s, I guess. So I, I started doing that early. And then when I had a, a job, my uh, first job in Japan was with a publishing company. And I kind of mixed my hobby of adventure travel together with the uh, business side. And I started publishing a series of uh, books and videos, uh, like workbooks with videos for uh, learning English. And oh. uh, so we went to Amazon River, we went to uh, the Taklamakan Desert, we went to Mount Everest and filmed, wow. and then I narrated the, um, the videos. So I realized that's when people first started saying, oh, you have a, a nice voice. I hadn't really thought of it that way before, but I, I, I took them sincerely. And, and then, uh, of course, getting involved with Silent Hill came uh, a little later after I had sold out of that company and was living in Italy for a year. And my, my older children were living in Tokyo. So I was flying back and forth between uh, Florence, where I was living, and Tokyo. And then my daughter said, could I ask if I could take her to a uh, silent, no, it wasn't silent, she didn't say Silent Hill 2. She said a PlayStation 2 game mm. audition. So I said, sure, I would take her. And then while I was at the audition, I asked if I could audition too, just for, uh, shits and giggles. I really didn't <laughs> expect to get a job. I, I know that auditioning gives you an adrenaline rush. So I, I you know, I'm an adrenaline junkie. So I went for it. <laughs> nice. Wow. Nice. And you got that's how way. that happened. Wow. Very that's interesting. Awesome. Wait, so Japan, Italy, you've been to a lot of places, it seems. Yeah, I have. I've, I've been all over the, the oh. world over wow. the years. I've to a lot of I've been to the North Pole twice. Oh, wow. wow. That's Whoa. cool. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I've been, uh, I, I jet skied down the, the Rio Negro, which is the yeah. fourth largest river in the world. Wow, that's awesome. I can <laughs> entertain my children when they're young anyway with stories <laughs> about uh, Piraiba right. swimming with the piranha. Wow. <laughs> Wait, that's can, very cool. Can you speak uh, multiple languages, uh, like uh, Japanese by any chance? Hi, Nihongo wa dekimasu. Whoa, uh, okay. Ato, it's very natural too, sound. Hi. Like, that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was, that's really impressive. 
Well, uh, after 30 years, <laughs> I should be able to do something. <laughs> when did yeah, you right. move to uh, Japan? 1985. Wow. Oh, wow. How, how old uh, were you? I was 27. Wow. Oh. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's and nice. I was like vice president of this company, <laughs> which, uh, I don't know. I suppose that's something. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a, that's <laughs> a I thing. used to be somebody. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think our next question comes from Ronan. Ronan, what do you have for Guy? Okay, so I know you, you mentioned a little bit about the, you, what led you up to, to auditioning for Silent Hill, but was there any you know, former interest that you may have had in the franchise that may have had some part in your auditioning for that role? Absolutely none. Oh, really? I had no idea what it was. I, I walked in and I had no idea what we were there for. All I knew was <laughs> where we had to be and what time and that it was a PlayStation 2 game. And that's all my daughter knew for that mm -hmm. matter. They didn't really say much on the poster. There was a poster at her school. And it said, uh, open auditions, 12-year-old girl, um, needs to speak English, like that. Huh. So wow. was, was this in Japan or here in America? Oh, no. It was at, uh, in Tokyo. Okay. Yeah, was, it was you over see out here in America to, yeah. to see advertising in a school yeah. for something like that's crazy. Well, you know, these guys are top professionals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That's how, they, yeah. that's how they landed me by, by yeah. total accident. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, it wasn't always the way it is today. We didn't have Norman Reedus playing parts. In the ah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, most of the voice talent in the early days, back when I did Silent Hill 2 and prior to that, um, were commercial television and radio voices. Uh, so they would, they had an agent and then they, uh, when there was casting calls, they would contact the agents and they'd get the standard group of professionals who go into a booth and do their thing. They've got like, like Dave Shoffley, who's a really close friend now. Uh, I met through, he played Eddie. Yep. Sorry about the basketball in the background. I'm, I'm in the hallway next to the gym. <laughs> And uh, Dave uh, can do like 20 different voices and he can even talk to himself and you might not know that he's playing both characters. So he's he's wow. quite, well, quite uh, professional. Donna is that way as well. She played uh, Angela. Yeah. And Monica and I are not. We're, we had studied acting, uh, method acting, mm -hmm. Kaczynski, right? And all that stuff. <laughs> and uh, then we never acted out after we got our careers going. So uh, both of us had a little like, adrenaline rush at being selected and then suddenly having a part to play and I think basically we started out playing each other or trying to keep up with each other I was trying to keep up with her okay there's the truth <laughs> <laughs> she's great and so we really put a lot into it that doesn't go into voice acting generally right and we didn't know any better it's simply because we didn't know that we're only supposed to work so, so many hours because we're only getting paid so much. For us, right. it was just fun. And <laughs> we, we did all of the, our work, writing our backstories and then comparing notes as to who we are as characters. There wasn't a lot I would ask, are there limitations on how we interpret the role? And they, they didn't really even know what I was talking about because they had studied acting either. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was fun. I think Monica and I ran away with it because we... we uh, we're like kids with a new toy, and we had time. We were both not with regular jobs at that time, so it was easy to get carried away with. Wow. Very so cool. you actually got to um, kind of create your own backstory for the character? They actually let you kind of do that? Absolutely. I that's probably, awesome. Oh, that's, that's yeah, really I still cool. have it written down somewhere. Wow. <laughs> would love to, love to hear really that cool. sometime. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah. Mike, in some some ways it doesn't match with the liner notes, uh, the game notes, but uh, but that's okay. It it yeah. is because uh, the the characters it's really really great. A lot of people refer to Silent Two Hill or Silent Hill Two. <laughs> Silent excuse me. Two Hill. <laughs> yes, they refer to that game as uh, one of the one of the best games of all time. Um, yeah. So I, I think uh, it it would be cool to kind of yeah. dive into what you thought of the character at a, maybe at another at another time if we can maybe have you back. Uh, on the show at a different date. But uh, my first question for you, Guy, is um, being that that game came out in the late thousands, like real early, real or excuse me, real early thousands, um, and now you're doing some voice work now, how, how much different is it 
as far as the evolution of being a voice actor, uh, you talked a little bit about it was kind of a, uh, a non kind of professional way to get hired. You just went in for an audition. They didn't know who you were, that kind of thing. And then nowadays you see people um, that are famous movie stars and stuff like that grabbing these roles. Can you tell us a little bit about your perspective on how the, uh, the voiceover industry has kind of evolved since then? Yeah, very briefly, I think. Let me take you into my private office here. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Very here briefly. <laughs> uh, I think it's shifting from amateurs to professionals. And I, you know, with all due respect, I believe that most of the voice talent that were doing games prior to, say, 2005 were amateurs. I mean, they were guys who did TV commercials or uh, jingles or radio commercials right. in English. Right. And they have beautiful voices, but they're not actors. And then what you had was Disney mm -hmm. animating movies throughout that period, educating the industry how to act with your voice. And people are, are getting better at it. I, I'm just pleased as I can be that people respect the work that I did in downplaying the role and underplaying and bottling up James's feelings and also respect the work that Monica put in to split her personality. Yeah. That was awesome. So, um, like you take Norman Reedus, I have no doubt that he would be fantastic in a, a game if he took one. And uh, I don't know, I think fans were kind of split on the um, fellow who did 24, that, that when he stepped, yes. into, yeah. he stepped into Metal Gear Solid, and yes. I think yep. it was a bit of a... I'm not sure that he was right for it or not. What do you think about that? Did he fit oh, in? Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's, uh, here's the thing. I think he does a great job, but, you know, it's split. Some people say, you know, David Hayter is the voice of Metal Gear, uh, of uh, Snake, whereas right. other people say, hey, Kiefer, actually, he, he's a veteran actor, and it, and it shows uh, through his voice acting. And I don't know. It's, it's, it's split. It's divided. Yeah. Well, I like it personally. Uh, I think okay, it's well, there you go. I mean, to answer your question, games are so big now, so much money goes into it. What we God, call. we're getting some static on your end. There we go. Okay, so games are so big now, and, and we're putting in... Oh, can I ask you a question? Are we going to do this live, or is yeah, this... Yeah, this is live. This is live, okay. Yep. Um, <laughs> a couple hundred people watching right now. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> no pressure. So be, so be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so be honest, right? <laughs> I'll be honest. I got to run out and get my bag because I left it outside. So I'm going to go white out for a minute. But That's I'll keep telling. Perfectly fine. Um, I think ooh, the sound is so much nicer out here. <laughs> Maybe I'll just do white out. <laughs> we can see you right here. That's that's. This is a very interactive interview. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there you go. I mean, you, you, you just have to deal with that. Okay. <laughs> That's beautiful out here. I wish you could see this. I'm looking over the horse stables and the trees. Oh, and man. Oh, when, uh, well, before we uh, let you go, we'll have you move the camera around and you can show us. <laughs> Smell of fresh grass cut. <laughs> Clean, oxygenated air. Oh, it's wonderful. Well, I'm in my basement. <laughs> Not very, uh, you know. Well, All right. I'm sorry. I skipped around there. I think it's moving toward professional voices more and more, and they're going to be. And yet at the same time, at the bottom end, you have indie game producers yes. at, with access to equipment that uh, cost millions, uh, say, 10, 15 years ago. But now, like these fellows who are doing Forgotten Memories, the new game. Yes. That yeah. I, acting in, they're bringing over some performance capture equipment in uh, the fall, and we're going to shoot and record in Tokyo. So, you know, performance capture, it kind of embodies the shift where yeah. um, back in 2000 when we were doing Silent Hill 2, they had video cameras running and the mocap equipment, and then later they were going to kind of s use the video cameras and still images to lay on face and... Uh, expressions on top of the wireframe that came out of the mocap. Well, now, apparently, they're able to shoot the video and mocap at the same time yep. with the same equipment. And so that means you're going to get much uh, clearer representation of the actors. And <laughs> it means you really have to act now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Let's go into the, the uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, Dave told me most of the games he did, including Shenmue and others, because he had done quite a few games before Silent Hill 2. Mm. He never even did any mocap. He never saw any material from the game. He simply went into a voice booth and recorded the uh, lines. Hmm. So, very cool. Was, it's quite a different. I don't think we're going to be seeing that. Even at the independent level, we're going to be seeing per performance capture. Ooh, yeah. wow. It's so weird, that image of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. It, it looks good on our, pretty yeah. good on our end. Oh, okay. I, I don't think we're going to be seeing uh, Slack performances anymore. I think we're going to get more and more into Cinema Verite or yep. even at the independent level. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be bigger and bigger names in the AAA games. That's, yeah. the, that's, yeah, that's, that's the nature of things. <laughs> yeah. Our next question is from Yong. Yong, take it away. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, mm. Do people ever tell you that you look a lot like uh, James uh, Sunderland? Uh, I, I, I was looking through images of him, and a lot of people do these Photoshop jobs where they put you alongside him. And back then when you had the haircut, <laughs> you guys were, like, identical. So uh, I don't know if they based the character a little bit off of you or something. So uh, what is the story behind that? I think they did. They made me larger. I, I, I'm not. I'm about 160, and I think James is probably about 200 pounds, mm -hmm. or at least 190. Yeah. So they added some uh, size to me and um, kind of squared off my jaw. But other than that, the, the hair is the same. My hair's a mm -hmm. kind of a mess today. But, <laughs> uh, Stylish. And um, face face has some similarities. Uh, yeah. I, I won't. I'm, I'm sure they changed it enough for their own reasons but also for legal reasons they definitely okay. didn't, didn't they were aware that they shouldn't use our exact likeness in the in because that wasn't a right that had been discussed oh right. i see right. huh so, so i think they yeah they can't help but be like me i did hear from uh sato that they didn't have preconceived notions on james they had very clear sketches for maria before okay. the game started and for eddie and they cast to those pictures but for james they were mm. Not really fixed on the look. So he evolved wish, quite a bit. I wish they had chosen a more stylish jacket for him. I mean, <laughs> everybody wants me to wear that that jacket to uh, when they come to a, an event where I am, and then I finally found a, an olive green uh, shirt that I don't mind wearing. But <laughs> that, that can't, can't find that jacket. <laughs> Yeah, it looked kind of beat up. It, it looked kind of mm. beat up. In Perhaps the it was cool for that era. Who knows? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, Ronan, you've got the next question, buddy. All right. So, in terms of your your voice work in video games as a whole, you you've for the most part stuck to, to horror themed titles. So, you know, are you a horror fan in general? Would you call yourself a horror fan in general? No, not at all. I'm a comedy fan. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like comedies, but oh, um, do a I lot think, of horror games. <laughs> <laughs> I will add to that. My my wife said something uh, clever. She said that. Uh, uh -oh. oh, did we lose uh, him? Did. I just thought he, I just thought he was pondering. I know. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow, he ponders very still. <laughs> okay, give us one second, guys. Like, this just got really intense for a second there. Well, Hold maybe on. He really is pondering. You never know. <laughs> Yeah, he was talking a bit about, you know, his uh, his like for comedy and stuff like that and okay. about his wife. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, so you're right. Right. And my wife said uh, that um, comedy is an essential element of horror. And I, I think uh, she might be on something there. So I like comedies, but I somehow got connected with horror. <laughs> <laughs> so for those I think of that you the people who make comedies are maybe sad people. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> And the people who make horrors, horror films are really funny and happy people. So uh, maybe games sure. count like that, too. You know, we yeah. have uh, all heard of famous um, comedians offing themselves because they were obviously not happy. So yeah. you never hear about famous horror movie people offing themselves because they weren't <laughs> happy. That's true. <laughs> that, is, that is very true. true story. Uh, for those of you who are just, uh, are just joining us or uh, kind of went away on the little break that we had, um, Ronan was just asking a uh, guy about, you know, w whether he was into horror or, or you know, whatnot. And God, just here explain that, uh, you know, he, he's more of a comedy guy, which is surprising because we don't see in a lot of comedy games. <laughs> but uh, if you're interested in my favorites uh, on my Facebook page, there's a list of all the movies that I like there we go. in my notes right. section. And you'll find most of them are comedies, I think. Very cool. Yeah. Well, uh, guys. Awesome. 
my next question for you, and um, I know this this might not be a topic you want to talk about too much, and it's it's totally okay if you want to pass on it or if you want to talk about a little bit about it with us. Um, I'd like to hear you know your side of what happened during this uh, whole Silent Hill HD remake uh, debacle, and then um, or what I'd like to know if you guys have are all past that. Has everything been resolved? Can you give us some insight on what actually happened? Because a lot of people, I know you've done an interview or two before on you know this subject, but a lot of people are still misconstruing information, and some people are saying this thing, and some people are saying that thing. And you've actually corrected one of the fans on Facebook the other day uh, about you know an issue with Troy Baker. And so I'd like to hear it straight from your mouth. What exactly happened, and what is your stance on uh, the whole Silent Hills HD thing? Well, the only... Konami person that I ever heard from is a a lawyer, or, or he, and he's in charge of licensing at Konami in California. Mm-hmm. And um, he sent me an email. I forget when it was, but you know, a couple three years back there, and mm-hmm. it was very curt and. And unfortunately, it wasn't it wasn't phrased the way it should have been. It should have been a little bit uh, a little bit more friendly. And basically, it said we we've misplay or we can't locate the contracts for the game. So would you please fill this release out and send it back? And then I found out that Dave had gotten one of those. Angela, uh, Donna had gotten one, and Monica had gotten one. I hadn't spoken to Monica in several years, so I used the occasion to write to her. And she was livid. She was said, I've, been, I've, I've got a lawyer. Uh, these guys use my face in the making of video, and that's a big no-no. And they, they definitely blurred your face out, but they left my face in. And, and, and she was really upset. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, wow. Well, let me see what, uh, what I can find out for us. Mm-hmm. And then I wrote back to this fellow, Michael, and I said, well, thank you for contacting us. There are no contracts. That's why you can't find them. They were never produced. I asked for them repeatedly, and they were never uh, forthcoming. So we basically just have a verbal agreement, and I'd be very happy to uh, sign an agreement with you if you will provide me with the following um, information so that I can do that. Mm-hmm. And then I listed what I, I needed to know to, in order to finalize the agreements because – The verbal agreement we had, which was between myself and the executive director of Konami who came into the set specifically to talk to me about the contracts one day because I kept asking for my contract and (laughs) never gave it to me. So that's why I know there was no contract. And he came in and he said, okay, PlayStation 2, Japan and the United States, all rights. And I said, okay, that's fine. So technically they could have used my face in the making of video if they had only released it in Japan and the United States. But since they released that video all over the world, they wisely decided to blur my face because I was the one who kept asking about the contracts. They didn't realize Monica was going to take issue with that, but uh, Mm -hmm. she did more than I did. I actually wouldn't have minded. (laughs) It's funny. So that's why I always say about Konami, they can't seem to do anything right for game fans. They, whatever they do do is either not enough or it's viewed as disingenuous. And in this case, they blurred my face. I wouldn't have minded being in there. And they left Monica's in and she was upset about it. So, um, <laughs> wow. Go figure. So, uh, <laughs> so no contracts. And I said, I need to know this information in order to have an intelligent discussion with you. And he said, I'll get back to you shortly. And I never heard from them again. Oh, wow. Well. That what happened is they then turned around, did the math themselves, because the information I asked for was which countries had it been released in and how many games have they sold mm-hmm. in each country. So they they kind of figured out right away, ooh, we got a live one here. We better back out <laughs> yeah. of this talk. And um, they never talked to me again. That was wow. unfortunate because the next thing they announced was some made up story about technical issues requiring new audio. The audio we had was, I would say, superior to the new audio. Maybe the voices weren't as good, but the the quality of the recording, the studio we used, was superior by far. Mm -hmm. And uh, some other stories they had come up with. But as I say, the only person from Konami I ever spoke to was this fellow, uh, Michael, who never spoke to him again. Everyone else is essentially uh, a hired gun or a hired worker. So Mary and Troy 
and even Devin and uh, Tom, they were all, well, maybe Tom, you could argue he was an employee of the California office, but I, I don't think they really had the depth and connection to headquarters information. There was a lot of miscommunication. So I don't feel um, badly about it. I, I very happy that it worked out the way it did. The worst outcome would have been if the original voices had not been included in the HD remake, regardless of whether it was uh, technically faulted or not. It just would have, it would have been sad, mm -hmm. I think, for, for myself and for Monica in particular to have been cut out that way. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I don't know what else I have to say. I don't feel uh, uh, that uh, Troy has said or done anything that's made me feel badly towards him. I th right, he he right. was just acting on information he got from whoever it was he did talk to. And the same for Mary. And I think they believed what they were saying was correct. I don't think that they, they you know, were trying to assassinate my character in any way. <laughs> it may have seemed that way to some fans, but I don't believe that's the case. I think they, right. you know, they believed in their hearts what they were being told and what they had experienced in their own career. Dave later pointed out to me that he gets money from the re-release of games he's done before. So the idea of not getting additional payments for releases sure. on additional platforms is, is not true, in particular in Japan. It may be that way in the U.S. Where, or Canada, where those guys have recorded in the past. But for Dave in Japan, being paid for additional platforms like a Xbox version or a um, PS3 version, those should have been there should have been some money given to the artists. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sure. I think every, every host here on this show is a very big advocate behind voice actors' rights and voice actors getting what they deserve because you guys bring these characters to life. And we, we, we talk a lot about if this specific character, for instance, Snake in Metal Gear, wasn't voiced by David Hayter originally, it might not have had the same impact on everybody's lives as it did when the game was released. And I believe the same thing goes for Silent Hill 2, uh, as I said, people, a lot of people tend to say that that is the best horror game that's ever been released. So, um, yeah, we're, we're definitely behind you on that. I'm, I'm glad you uh, cleared that up. Um, one last thing I wanted to tack on is actually a community question that comes from uh, a lot of people want to know this. It was uh, just kind of just popped up here in the last few days. Do you have an opinion on uh, Konami making a Silent Hill uh, pachinko machine? Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, fans have all sent me those clips and they're they're really upset and i write back to them stay strong and don't don't take it you know don't take it hard but between you and me fellas i'm flattered that they think that highly of the game after all that's gone down for them to want to make a pachinko game out <laughs> yeah. of it i'm flattered i'm flattered <laughs> they, they have like 10 10 silent hill games to choose from and it, it seems like the main themes come from two yeah, right. <laughs> but I noticed that you noticed they changed the voices. Yes, mm, yeah. a lot of people have issues with <clears throat> the, the HD re-release voices as well. Like you, like you pointed out, they they weren't as good uh, as the original voices. Granted, um, like I, I, I've noted in one of my questions here that the the voice acting for that far back in time was actually very very good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're definitely behind you on that. But I'd like to uh, yeah. go ahead and let Young uh, get his next question in here. Yeah. Before my next question, I just want to say I'm scared for Metal Gear right now. If they turn <laughs> that into Pachinko, I love Metal Gear. It's it's my favorite franchise. If they turn that into Pachinko, I'm gonna flip out. So. <laughs> oh, oh, you can. I assure you, Metal Gear Solid will be a Pachinko machine. Absolutely. <laughs> oh man. Well, thank you for that reassurance. No, I have no doubt about that one. <laughs> Yeah. If they made Silent Hill in, into a pachinko machine, yeah. why wouldn't they make Metal Gear Solid into a pachinko? You know, I, I got to be in denial on that so I can uh, live with myself. So that's the route <laughs> I'll take. Uh, but no, I, I kind of agree with you, I think. For that's... a new generation of gaming fans. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Oh, Isn't that, wasn't that what they said? I, they were going to change probably. the voices for a new generation of gaming fans. <laughs> Something along those lines. <sighs> So depressing. Okay. So next question. Yeah. <laughs> um, how would you uh, describe the character of James Sunderland? And what are some things that you had to keep in mind? And maybe what are some directions you were given to play the character? I know you, you said you had a, a lot of room to play with him. Uh, was there any, anything in particular that you really had to keep in mind to get in character? And anything in particular they uh, requested of you? 
during the audition, I think the part that cinched it for me was they said, okay, now, okay, do this, do this, okay, mime this, okay, do this. All right, now sit down on the sofa and react to the news that your wife is dead. And um, there were some lines similar to the, the bedside scene in the final game. Mm-hmm. And I started uh, weeping as I was reading the lines and I was oh. visibly shaking. And I think they understood that I could tap into that level of sadness and remorse Mm -hmm. at at will. And it was because of my difficult first marriage I was just coming out of where I really, really suffered for years with a very, very abusive, uh, psychologically abusive woman. But for the sake of my children, I wanted them to be old enough, plus she's Japanese and she's threatening to cut me off from them, and that's very likely in Japan. If you get divorced, the courts give you, the husband, no rights to uh, wow. see the children. So I had to stay married to develop a relationship with them. They hadn't learned to speak English yet. They could only speak Japanese. I was petrified of losing my kids to her. So I so struggled through this very uh, difficult, manipulative woman, and then finally managed to escape. I didn't smother her with a pillow. That would have been really terrible for the children. But if we had no children, the pillow option was there, right? (laughs) So I honestly really, really understand that. And I I think a lot of fans, especially there are a lot of uh, female uh, women fans of the game, they probably, I don't know, maybe it's such a complicated story. Somewhere in their hearts, they know there's something not right about Mary. It's kind of those demon scenes in the mm-hmm. end, and where, where she's screaming at James and so forth. There's she's a fairly manipulative woman. That's how I viewed it. So I brought that into the game. I, there are no lines in there that get into that. Mm-hmm. It's just James sucking it all in and being quiet, and then you know doing her off. But he loves her too. Mm-hmm. He desperately loves her, and without her, his life is going to have no purpose. Mm-hmm. So that's why I thought, in many ways. You know, Mary asking James to take care of Laura, Laura, uh, Laura needing a family, and James needing some purpose to his life, which is otherwise fairly uh, devoid of uh, purpose. Mm-hmm. I thought the leave ending made the most sense to me, and, and that's how I like to uh, think of it. On the other hand, um, knowing now what I do about Moody Shinju and other Japanese cultural yeah. elements, um, which I didn't know at the time. I hadn't pieced all these things together until years till years afterwards. I believe the in water ending is the most beautiful ending, if you follow me. It's the it's the richest one because it addresses all of these cultural atonement and um, and there is no answer. I mean, J- James is he's uh, damaged goods, and we yeah. he chooses to end his life to atone for that. Right. in the in water ending that's beautiful on the other hand it leaves laura uncared for and so right. me me being who i am and believing i have four children believing and taking care of the children the way i do um i i think the leave is the one for me but in terms of sheer cinematic or game beauty the in water ending is un, is unsurpassed wow well, that's uh I, yeah I, hmm that makes me look at uh, the game in a whole different way. Uh, yeah, with uh, I, I love insight. a voice actor who's who's knowledgeable of their story. You know, a lot of our voice actors yeah. might not have played the game, but they know about it. Like like uh, like yeah. the, some of the guys well, in the past. To be honest, I've learned so much about of this from fans and right. from guys like you who who <laughs> analyze games for other people. I haven't had PewDiePie call me yet, but if he does, I'll take him call. <laughs> uh, oh, just boy. for my for my youngest daughter's sake, she yeah, she right? watched his videos. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> I heard uh, I heard your sense. favorite ending though is the dog ending, correct? That's the one that you. Oh were- gosh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I didn't want to record it. They uh, they got kind of they strong armed me on that one. I finally did it. I'm glad I did. Uh, as I've gotten older and. And I've gotten more involved in the game business and making games myself and now recording another game. I appreciate what was going on. (laughs) Remember now, Monica and I came out of 
Like we wanted to be actors in some part of our brain. So we took courses in it. We got a degree in it. Mm -hmm. And then we never did it. So suddenly we're acting in this game. We really acted. We didn't yeah. like play. And it was such a rich story. For me, it was an insult to add jokes like that. Kitty, kitty jokes at the end of such a deep and heavy performance. Yeah. I didn't get it. They got it. I recorded it. I'm glad I did. And it's deep Japanese yeah. humor. Keep it light. Yeah, keep it. Yeah. Yeah. Add a little, uh, a little humor to an otherwise very dark story. Fair enough. Roman, your next question for Guy. All right. So you, I know you talked a little bit about some of the recording sessions that you had, but I was kind of wondering, you know, uh, what it was like when James had those, those really deep uh, monologue moments where he talked about or questioned whether or not his existence in the world was legitimate and things like that. I was wondering what the direction was like. I know you mentioned that uh, in a previous interview that uh, Sato had kind of given you a little bit of, of direction about what you were supposed to be feeling in certain scenes, like when he was looking in the mirror and stuff like that to himself. So I was kind of wondering what those sessions were like for those specific moments for you. Well, I don't really remember thinking about it that much. I remember going into character, getting to a dark place and feeling bad mm -hmm. and then doing my best to cl clearly express the words I was given. Mm -hmm. um, I remember feeling bad for hours after certain days. Wow. It took a while. It took a while to get out of James and my wife was wow. like, look, don't come, don't come right home after the studio. Please go out and get, <laughs> you know, don't bring that back. <laughs> right, right. I see. I, I probably, I, I probably tried too hard, frankly speaking. I don't know. Uh, no, I think I think you're fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely, I think it was. I think it paid off in the end, at least in terms of the quality of the voice work in the game, at least. I will tell you a funny story because this is going to segue into Forgotten Memories, the new game, right? So right. I'm sitting with Dave, and we're totally like wasted one night, just <laughs> like we do, brainstorming <laughs> about stuff. He's always got some ideas he's working on, and I, you know, I'm in venture capital, so I'm always looking at new things, and right. we should, we we bounce things around, and and finally, he was recording some stuff for uh, Forgotten Memories, like doing two or three different voice, and I was using my equipment to record him at my office. It was maybe eight, nine o'clock at night. And, and then finally, he said something to me which really touched my heart, because mm -hmm. he's a very good friend, and he said, you know, your performance, when I first heard it, I didn't really think it was very good, to be honest, for, for Silent Hill 2. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because it's not like a canned performance, whereas, you know, me and, and the others, we go in, we get in the studio, we know we've got to do it all in three hours and then get out and we're right. being paid for that and nothing more. So for us, we've got it all in our head already when we go in. With you, it looked like you were exploring the feelings and the part as you were going. I mean, it's just real. It's just you. So it's, um, it's affecting. It takes, you can watch it over and over again and you'll still find something in it and i was like oh wow thank you dave because that's uh, how i would like to have it be remembered yeah not yeah. one expresses it that way and right. then on the other hand i don't know if i could do 20 different character voices and you not recognize them all as me i was yeah. very comfortable playing a part that i understood so here's a guy has very difficult situation with his wife and it's resolved not in a great way but it's resolved and you right. play the game and you help him resolve it and heavy stuff uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to go into a lot of the stuff I get from fans but I right. will tell you a lot of it touches on a very dark places in the psyche and and they say that it helped them through dark That's times That's so good. I take my responsibility for that uh, very seriously awesome. now get into forgotten memories so I'm like filled with an ego rush for here's Dave's professional <laughs> voice guy and that's all he does right and he's right. telling me because you're you know you were real that's why it was good so I start recording lines for forgotten memories and I'm being real mm. and this is a game about a, a, a man who about my age and he's dealing with women who, who seeking to become more independent and empowered and stand alone in the world and yet he's kind of patriarchal in his thinking and, and wants to help take care of them. And at 
they're demanding independence, but at the same time, they're manipulating him with their feminine guiles. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my God, this is like me, my wife, and my three daughters. <laughs> this is the story continues. So we're for, oh, Silent wow. Hill allowed me to catharsis, have a catharsis with uh, my feelings about a difficult marriage. Mm -hmm. This is going to help me, I hope, in the best case, start to grow and think about how I maybe patronize women without empowering them more. And I, mm -hmm. with my daughters, I certainly want to empower them. I want them right. to be very strong yeah. and, and, and yet feminine and go out into the world and make good uh, partnerships with whomever, whomever they choose and sure. become productive members of society. So I, I do want, I look, I have high hopes for this. And that, that's why I took the, the part. The director seemed very sincere. He certainly understood Silent Hill 2. And right. he, the first uh, reviews of the first game were pretty good. It's out on yeah. iOS and my fans seem to enjoy it. It's, uh, the next game will be a lot deeper. So anyway, we're recording a couple of lines, long story short. And, and Dave says, uh, you're underplaying it. I say, but I'm being real. <laughs> so now it turns out that um, me being real is not good. Okay. Even the directors sent it back. Even my wife said it was no good. So I said, no, 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 I'm, I, I got to be real. That's where it's at. And it's, it kind of sucked. So I <laughs> redid all of them, not being real, but being real and on fire. Yeah, real on fire. yeah, sure. Huh. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Very wow. That's, my, that's new, my new strategy. Real on fire. Real on fire. <laughs> Real on fire. <laughs> well, I know... <laughs> a tip for all voice actors. <laughs> exactly. Be real and on fire. <laughs> like I you know, guys, right? Exactly. Right. exactly. Just, just like us. We're all on fire. But I know we're, we're getting short on time here. We had that, um, that interruption uh, when we lost connection. So I'm actually going to pass questions over to you real quick, Yong, and then we'll all back... Right. To Ronan and I'll ask my questions at the very end if we have time. Okay. So, John, go ahead. Sure. Um, so, going back to uh, James and maybe uh, the scripts you were giving for, for Silent Hill 2, I know you, you talked a lot about some of the dark places you had to tap into, but were there any specific moments in the script that you were like, ooh, that I'm a little uncomfortable with that, or that maybe shocked you a little bit, um, other than, you know, the, the dog ending? Uh, no, only the dog ending. Oh, there were there were there were a couple of lines that I mm, kind of was hoping we could massage them a little further. One okay. was, "This town is full of monsters," and I thought that was childish. But of course, it turns out it's a fan favorite, so it's okay. It's just one of those. What do lines. I know? <laughs> then that worked out well. Yeah. This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there eating pizza? Though so that one, and then the other one was, "I killed a human being." A human being. I had a trouble with that one, although they seemed to like it. I didn't feel that I could. I didn't feel I was carrying it the way I wanted to, but right. it, it, it seemed okay. Right. And then, um, what was the other one that was tough? Nope. The others I, I, I was happy with. There was a scene with, uh, well, of course, the dog ending, as you know, I, I thought that was silly, but that is my voice in Japanese. Uh -huh. And they never even showed me the UFO ending. I'm glad they didn't because I... <laughs> <laughs> UFO ending. Come on, guys. Oh, boy. <laughs> but, uh... So no, there you go. nothing uh, nothing shocking or uncomfortable, just some stuff you would have preferred to massage and maybe a tweak a little bit uh, to your liking, basically. No, nothing uncomfortable. It's certainly a very uh, clean script. There mm -hmm. were... like, But there were just things... <clears throat> I mean, we, we went yeah. through it pretty... Uh, repeatedly on the mocap stage. So for us and for me and Monica and Dave and all our scenes together were recorded live. Hmm. And then maybe five or six takes until we were all happy gotcha. with it. And we went back into the recording studio for the, the overdub hmm. and we were watching the scene that was selected, edited together. And then we recorded and it was easy to recall what we had done on stage. So hmm. it was um, not your typical... Uh, recording type of for game where they never see the game or never play the part together and then they just go in and individually record their lines that's that's more that gotcha. was more typical back then i think today we pretty much see them doing what uh is called performance capture so it's much much more realistic now yeah. and th th i don't think you can get a big game where 
if there are two characters interacting, they're not actually interacting because so much chemistry from being there in, you know, physically and acting together and playing off each other. It's such an improvement in the result. Yep, that's true. That's very, very true. Absolutely. So, uh, Ronan, your next question? Uh, yeah, so uh, Donna Burke, as many know, she did the voice of uh, Angela in the game. And I was kind of right. curious if, because we, we interview a lot of, of voice actors and actresses, and we typically ask questions of whether or not they were in the same recording booth at the same time. And many of them say yes, many of them say no. So my question to you is, did you and Donna get a chance to actually interact with each other during the, the voice work at all? Yes, during the mocap. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a little bit because I know she scolded me because I hadn't memorized my lines. I mean, <laughs> she was, the word professional came up and I think it had an un in front of it. <laughs> I, I found a whiteboard in the, in the room and I, I had it across behind her and I had written my lines on them. So I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah right nice. so she was a little miffed at me but uh, that's okay we, we she's a pro and we, yeah. we pulled it off at, at the audio no one was in the booth at the same time oh. okay. when we got to the audio stage uh no one was acting everyone was just recalling and recording sure. so one by one we would just watch the scene play. We had the earphones and we would record our line almost over what was on the scratchy video right, uh, right. version of it. Yeah, and then there was, but to, in the in the mocap session, there were there were a number of times where everyone was crying after, the, oh, especially wow. those bedside scenes with with uh, James and and uh, Mary dying. Those right. or, and, yeah. and her forgiving him. Those yeah. were those were very heavy. You can't. No, I guess you see it because obviously yeah, it's moved a lot of people. So, <laughs> absolutely, nope. I, I hope kind of that answers your question, Ronan. Oh no, it absolutely does. I, I kind of have a, an add-on part to that question as Please. well. Um, <clears throat> I know uh, Angela's character, as in general, she's supposed to be the kind of character that's not kind of not all the way there mentally like supposed to be kind of the the, the drifting away sort of character in a sense so my question yes. is how was it for you to try to to act and react to those to moments like that where she seemed like she wasn't there mentally That's, i didn't find it difficult let me mm. put it that way and yeah i've had brushes <clears throat> with crazy women for years <laughs> <So> <laughs> having her yeah. act crazy <laughs> and, and you know having dealt usually you just want to remain calm not get baited into yeah you know, you're, it's like yeah. you're walking on broken glass and you've got to be careful when you're you certainly don't want to trip and fall you yeah. want to keep your balance right. you're constantly looking for signs and so that's the that's how i acted those parts but you know reserved I, I I think there's only one part where she got through uh, to me, and it I I reacted without thinking, which I mm -hmm. I felt was appropriate. It's where she su suggested I was going to kill myself, mm. and then I I said that I would never do that. Oh wow! All right, well that's crazy. Was Donna yeah, that is. Did Donna Burke sing at all at the time? Because uh, she, right now, she sings for uh, one of the themes for Metal Gear Solid 5, or she sings various themes, actually. She did uh, overdubbed, uh, she overdubbed some of the classics, and she also, yeah. wow. Yeah, really? that was, that's her main thing. She's yeah. a jazz singer and a, yeah. a vocalist, and she brought one of her uh, albums to, and oh. gave me a copy of oh, it. Oh, wow. Very cool. Awesome. Very cool. That was before she told me I was unprofessional. <laughs> first, first starting out, it's like, oh, hi, how are you? You know, who are you? Well, I'm Donna Burke. I'm a singer, and I and, and oh, okay. So she identified herself as a singer to me mm -hmm. first oh, cool. and foremost. Hmm. That's I awesome! See. Wow, that's, that's cool. really awesome. I'm gonna actually take the the next question. <clears throat> oh, uh, are you gonna me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, let, I would like to shift topics to Silent Hills. Just I, I, It seems that you know about the game based on how you've talked about Norman Reedus and whatnot. So uh, my question to you is just what, do you, what did you think of it when you saw it? You know, what, what do you think about Hideo Kojima and Del Toro sort of partnering up for this project? And also have you played uh, PT, the playable teaser for uh, the game? I, 
I thought, gee, I hope they call me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I uh, thought, uh, no, I haven't played PT. I like comedies, remember? Right. And right. then um, I. I guess I checked out who Del Toro is. Mm -hmm. I know Norman Reedus because I had watched a couple of episodes of Walking Dead, so mm -hmm. I, I knew uh, of him. Right. I think I checked into his background <clears throat> to see what else he had done. He's he's a, been around. He's a pro. You know, he's been yep. doing that, that's his his thing. He's been doing it a long time. Kind of like the guy who did uh, Breaking Bad. I've forgotten his name uh, right now. Brian. Uh, Gil oh, Brian Cranston. Yeah, Brian Cranston who. Mm -hmm. Seem to have come out of nowhere, but has been acting his whole adult life. He's a professional, and he yeah. was fantastic in that. So Norman Reedus is the same. I have tremendous respect for the fellow, and I, I certainly hope that something does come of their uh, their efforts because they've they've put some thought into it already. Mm -hmm. um, business wise, it was a disaster in the making, and never had a shot of ever happening. Yeah. And that's my my look at it. The, guy, the CEO or the chairman of Konami can't stand Kojima and finally got a, a reason to fire him. You know, there was a kind of a comedy video going around of the fellow who did Final Fantasy and he kept coming up with crazier and crazier ideas in an effort to get fired, which, which is what this comedy video he made for of himself. Um, and I think Kojima in some ways threw down this this thing, this gauntlet in front of uh, the chairman, and it, it had to happen. I, don't, I can't imagine that he saw it ending any other way. Yeah. It was just so over the top. Um, Metal Gear Solid, way over budget. That Fox engine eating cash, and the whole company heading toward legal gambling in Japan, which is coming later this year. It'll yep. be voted on later this month. Yep. And, you know, that's why they've got these pachinko machines coming out. But right. that's, not the real, that's not the real end game. The real end game is gambling on mobile phones and mobile mm -hmm. devices. That was, the, that was what was in that coded message, not so coded, from the CEO, the chairman. He's saying, <laughs> we're going to focus on mobile. Yeah. And they, what they didn't say is mobile gambling. But uh, gosh, if you could, <laughs> if you could take over a, even twenty percent of mobile gambling in Japan over the next two decades, say, we're talking billions of dollars. Yeah. It's a huge, huge opportunity. So they all hands to that, and why waste money on the Fox engine, which probably didn't really work so good? But I'm sorry, those that's my feelings on that. I, I know no, that totally uh, Kojima has a lot of fans, and I. I researched him carefully too, so I would understand more about him. He started out as an, a coder and a, and a designer, and he Metal Gear Solid was his baby. He created the genre, so to speak, of yeah. stealth uh, military military type games. And yeah. I, man, you gotta, I have a lot of respect for uh, his creativity and what he did. He just, yeah. as a businessman, kind of uh, blew it because <laughs> he could still be there, but we'll see. You know, now he's off on his own, and he can. Exactly. Uh, and he's got Del Toro who wants to still work with him. He can make yeah. a new company and, and get it funded and make some. We'll see what he can do. You seem to have I'll a good grasp on that. And if, he, if he's watching, give me a call, man. I'll, <laughs> I'll do something with you. I'll check my schedule book. <laughs> there we go. I thought the first time I heard that. But uh, was that the, your last question, the one that you had? Yeah, yeah. That was the previous one was the last question. Well, I know we're right there at the, the tail end of the interview. So, Young, if you want to take it over, sure. I know you've got one other question, and then you got like a couple of small community yep. questions, um, and then we can wrap this up. Sure. So, right, okay. We'll My last question, question to you is simply, are you a gamer? Do you play games? And how many of the Silent Hill games have you played? Although you did say that you're not a fan of horror games, so I'm assuming that you haven't played a lot of the Silent Hill games. I... I've just done the playthrough with uh, my friend at the controls and mm -hmm. made a video of that. You can see yes. on my right. mm -hmm. YouTube channel. I have played video games. I'm, I play with the kids. I've, I had the original family computer, the, the original right. Nintendo. Oh, wow. and, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, you know, sometimes my children will still try to beat me at Mario Kart or something <laughs> like that. I don't uh, have any of the fancy games. I did, I hate to admit this, but I got addicted to a first-person shooter game for about uh, oh, five or six months. Wow. And then that was it. I, I did it. I, I, I went there and I did that. But that experience was very helpful in understanding how 
players form a bond with the characters in the game. So the the sergeant who of the team, it was called uh, what was that game called? Modern Warfare. Oh, Call of Duty. Ah, Modern Warfare. Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Yeah. Because you could play it on the Nintendo Wii, which is what we own at home. So. Oh, okay, right, yeah. yes. And, um, yeah, I got really into that. Those were great characters uh, oh, yeah. who acted that. I, I really enjoyed that. So that's my story about playing games. I, I, uh, I probably should play more of them. But now I have sure. a team of five. We're working on uh, Words and Monsters, which is our game for learning um, yeah. language. Very cool. And they all grew up playing RPG games, so they're, we're kind of leaning in that direction. They're, they're more knowledgeable, on them. and the, they're my, my front-end and back-end coders and my content people. So. That sounds yeah. very cool. Sounds really cool. When, when is you. that project uh, slated to come out? Geez, I'm hoping to release a beta in uh, the fall, and wow. uh, I wish I could say that the final game will be out in this year, but uh, it's, it's complicated. Sure. Where can people that are interested really cool. in checking that out? Because that's something I wanted to ask you towards the end. And since we're right there, we might as well just get it out there. We've got almost 300 and something other people watching right now. So anybody that's interested, where can they go ahead and, and learn about this game? Do you have like a website up for it? Do you have a, a place where you put out information on it? On Facebook, there's a Words and Monsters page. They can go there. And I've linked to a, a demo video that shows um, the prototype of the battle scenes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Up, okay. That's up there. Very cool. It's, it's. Um, I don't know if you've played uh, Final, uh, not Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest or yeah. um, mm -hmm. Shironeko or Kuroneko, and there's a new one called Pop something. It, basically, you're doing work. Uh, I'm puzzling dragons. You're matching gems at the bottom, Candy Crush. Yeah. You're matching candies and so forth. Instead of matching gems or things that leave nothing behind, we're matching words. And it's called paired associate method of learning language. And your work matching the words is advancing your character through these islands and saving the world. Wow. Probably the same, same as most um, RPG type games. Finally, learning can and, and be so, fun. So, <laughs> well, I, I'm giving a, a presentation at a conference on uh, neurolinguistics in September. Hmm. And it's getting into the science of uncertainty, which mm -hmm. causes attraction and addiction. So uh, I would like to do a little research on the, the science of horror and why that causes an addiction as well. But um, I, right now I'm wor working on the science of uncertainty. Sure. And apparently pachinko has a lot to do with that. Slot machines have a lot to do with it. Oh, and yes. hopefully a, a good RPG game has a lot to do with uncertainties as well. It, it heightens the uh, production of dopamine in the brain, yes. which is, yeah. makes you feel good, and you want more of it. So you, you know, it's pretty cool stuff. Cool. So I've been doing um, academic. I'm going to publish a paper on that subject. Sounds great. That sounds really cool. All right. Well, Yong, it's got a couple uh, quick little community questions yep. for you guys. So Yong, go ahead and take it away. Yeah, sure. And just... Thank the community for these questions. I, we have definitely appreciated that. I know it's short notice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, just a couple. Uh, uh, the first one is from Sigma YX from YouTube. Are you friends with uh, Akira Yamaoka, the composer of the Silent Silent Hills series? Have you met him at all? He's an acquaintance. I would I would like to call him a friend, but he's a rock star. So you know, he's. I hope he's a friend. Uh, we're we're <laughs> connected on Facebook. I've written okay. to him recently. I'm I'm trying to get him to uh, agree to write the music for my Forgotten Memories game. Very wow. cool. That'd be very cool indeed. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, that That'd would be, be awesome. very cool. Uh, we, uh, we lost your video, just so you know. We've still got the audio, though. So yeah. Just, cool. yeah, just wanted to make you aware. Oh, there we go. Okay, my Video's bad. back. All right. Okay, multiple... Okay. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, uh, this one was already answered. A lot of users were, were asking, what's your favorite uh, ending? Which one do you think it's canon? Uh, you answered both, so we'll skip that one. Uh, Sebastian yeah. Hernandez from YouTube. Um, what was your absolute favorite part of Silent Hill 2. What was your favorite moment? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's a heavy scene, but it's because it was so satisfying. The bedroom scene between uh, James and Mary where uh, he confesses and she forgives him. Very cool. That was just, it was just so rich and satisfying to have done a good job of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. 
Mr. Fish 291 from YouTube. Do you feel um, attachments to si Silent Hill, or was it just a job? Um, I, I, I know I'm sure you, you feel attachment now, but, but back then when you were starting out with this project, was it just a, a job, or did you, did you feel somewhat attached to it after you were uh, done with the project? I never do jobs. <laughs> I don't do jobs. <laughs> I, I put everything I have into whatever I'm doing. That's yeah. the way I've always been. Mm -hmm. So I, I was totally into it when I was doing it. Mm -hmm. Sadly, Konami didn't keep up with us or take advantage of us to drive sales even further. And I had no idea that the game had become a success because I didn't play games and I didn't know. I was locked away in Japan. Mm -hmm. And it's not popular in Japan. So I was very happy to learn that it was a big success and that there are, there's, there are fans and they tracked me down. And mm -hmm. I just had a fan event in Milwaukee. I had 25 oh, wow. people come and uh, we had a pizza party and I signed things. I don't go to conventions and I do not sign things through the mail. So please don't <laughs> send at me requests. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it through. It's not real. So if I meet you, I'm happy to sign things and shake your hands, but I don't send things through the mail. So I had done, then I stopped again in Cleveland and um, met fans there. That was really fun. And I, whew, I always learn so much from them. And they're, they're so sincere after yeah. all these years. Yeah. Very so. cool. And that's uh, my last question. Okay. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps it up. We do like to do one thing. They, uh, um, guy and it's i hope it's not uh asking too much but we usually like to have our guests say some lines from the game that they have and we put it as kind of an intro uh, at the beginning of the because this video will be up on youtube as well would you mind doing a line or two for us and james i'll be i'll be happy to and this was a line that uh jesse I, I, asked me jesse asked me to record this at the fan event and i it's one that i don't normally do but it's pretty it's pretty cool I was weak. That's why I needed you. Needed you to punish me for my sins. That's all over now. I know the truth. Now it's time to end this. Nice. Very like, cool. Awesome. I've got um, two, two smaller ones here. I'm going to in the Skype chat. Um, okay. That one um, right there is the uh, right when he's about to go into the, uh, the town. Um, it should look a little familiar to you. And then I've got one. Are those verbatim or are you me re remembering them? Uh, I have them. I, I, when I did some research before. Uh, so these are verbatim? Verbatim, okay, good. right, right okay. from the game. And then here's the last one. All right. There we go. And I apologize to the audience for the screens being a little messed up while I send that over to... Uh, it's a guy. All right, yeah. So those two uh, that we have there, those are uh, two pretty, pretty. Uh, okay, I've got them in front of me. I'm ready. Perfect. All right, All right. I'll shut up. <laughs> I guess I really don't care if it's dangerous or not. I'm going to town either way. Don't worry, I'm not crazy. At least, I don't think so. Nice. Thank you so much, Guy. Before My we pleasure. go, is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Like I said, we've got a, a couple hundred in here watching you uh, live. If there's anything you'd like to plug or shout out, I know you've got the new game coming out. I know you have the Forgotten Memories as well. Uh, I know you've got a Facebook page. So anything like that that you'd like to tell them about, feel free to go ahead. Yeah, please uh, like my Facebook page and keep up on my uh, my game work there. And uh, thank you all very, very much for your kindness to me and the other actors over the years uh, and your uh, faith and support for Silent Hill 2. And uh, stay silent. <laughs> very nice. Thank you very much. Very I nice. look forward to all of your work coming out. Um, hopefully, we'll see a lot more of you here in the future. You've got an amazing uh, voice for the video game industry, and we're all so happy to have you. Uh, Ronan and Yong, anything else for Guy before we let him go? Just uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us. That was some awesome insight you gave us, uh, and it made me look at the game in a whole new different way. So, yeah. just uh, thank you for being so dedicated to. <laughs> the game that you worked on for us fans and whatnot. And uh, just we really appreciate all the work you've done. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for all. joining us. Thank you very much, fellas. Have all a great right. day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Get outside and enjoy that air.
<laughs> I'm going paddle. I'm going paddle boarding on the lake. Oh man, I'm jealous. <laughs> oh man. All right. Be safe out there, man. We'll see you. Hopefully, we'll have you on the show again another time. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Guy wow. He. Thank you for tuning in for another great interview. How did you guys like that one? It was, was fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was really insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh, we're but, twinsies. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we're totally twins, obviously. Absolutely. I mean, they used to call me Blasian back in high school, so, you know, it's, it's totally fine. <laughs> me too. What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Well, we got to quit. We're going to have a quick post show. Um, I don't have a ton of time um, t today to do. You had two episodes of the Kodak uh, this week. So we're going to make this one. Um, doesn't, it's not going to be super short, but uh, we definitely we definitely got a couple little things to talk about. So let's just uh, let's get right into it. No commercials, no nothing. Let's just go ahead and talk. Sure. Um, so quickly, uh, the first thing that I would like to talk about is um, we have the new Metal Gear Mother Base uh, gameplay out. Oh, man. Ah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude, right? That's what I uh. said. A uh, lot, of, lot of insightful things, not just for Mother Base, but for your FOB system as well. Totally, totally makes Metal Gear Online not coming out on time an okay thing for me. Yeah, uh, seriously. It, even though I have to wait longer than most. Um, so, y'all would like to start off with you. Uh, just overall impressions and maybe your favorite thing that you saw from there. I hope it's not the hand of Jehudi because what the hell is that thing, right? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you don't know what that is uh, at all? Really? I don't. Uh, it's I, from really? Zone of the Enders. Yes. Um, it's the abilities you yeah. get. Yeah. Uh, you, never, you, I never got to play it that. It does exactly what that does in Zone of the Enders. Yes. You can grab objects from afar with something called the Wisp. And mm -hmm. uh, the arm, if you look at it, it actually says Wisp. It's, it's, a, it's a basically a, a reference to Zone of the Enders, which is a Hideo Kojima game. Yeah, right. I know, I know about awesome the game. game. I just never got to play it. Is that okay. the blue arm that we saw? Well, the, yes. the mech is, he has like a, a blue-yellow combo yeah, arm. Yeah, it's kind of like so. a clawish mech yeah. arm thing. Yeah, so it's, it's, a good, it's a cool reference to that, which is really yeah. cool. And, and I don't know if you uh, saw this, but Kiefer actually does the, the battle cry. Um, uh, yes, I, they said very cool. people would recognize it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what that was. But um, once again, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> FOB, man, looks so freaking sick. Uh, A lot I'm, than I thought. Yeah, no, yeah. It, um, the one thing I'm worried about is if I'm in this really important mission and then, bam, FOB is being invaded. Oh, one, one moment, Zero. Let me, uh, you know, be right back. Uh, <laughs> Got to deal with my FOB. Uh, we'll, we'll talk later. But, um, no, I mean... Jesus, uh, I'm more hyped than ever for that game now. Uh, Mother Base, first of all, is freaking huge. It, it's a lot bigger than I ever expected it to be. Yeah. Uh, but FOB is what really, really drew my attention, and uh, it, it's, it's definitely... It's a big. It's a different layout than. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a little different than what we saw in um, the uh, what was it? The Gamescom 2014 right. uh, gameplay demo at the end. Uh, a, a lot of little changes. But um, I, I really liked the, the wormhole extraction thing. Yes. Because that makes sense. Um, <laughs> nanomachines, I'm telling you. Yeah, nanomachines. And yeah, honestly, if there's wormholes in this game, hell, why not nanomachines? Um, right. And it acknowledges them as wormholes. It says, like, on the, in the map marker, it says wormhole. Like, yeah. Right yeah. It's not just, like, a, a cute phrase for it. It says wor wormhole, yeah. right? It's Nobody so bats an eye. For them, it's, like, a normal occurrence. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> It the wants. 80s, the aliens and stuff. Yeah, right? 80s, alien. yeah. I guess it kind of makes sense. <laughs> there but, you go. But, uh, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say except that it looks awesome. Uh, and you can make multiple FOBs, which is great. Uh, I don't know if you have to, like, guard all of them at once or how that's going to work. Uh, but uh, the reward and consequence system is awesome. Uh, yeah. the, the way everything works, you tag a target, and then if you lose him... Um, uh, the the marker will eventually go away, so you got to find him again, right. and it, it it just. But you always know that there is an invader. There's a timer, and and you get this notification. It's a matter of finding him. So uh, you will never be able to infiltrate a base without them knowing. They'll know that you're there, but they they just won't know where, and so it's going to be a struggle for them to look right. for you. And it, I feel like it, they 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 thought about this like extensively, and it yeah. everything just makes sense. And uh, it, 
I don't know what else to say. It's going to be awesome. Uh, <laughs> There's it, I'm so one hyped. concern from for me in, in that point. You actually make a great, um, you know, you, you you pointed it out is you all if if you do always know somebody is invading your base. I feel like that kind of sets up the uh, the ability for people to camp the the one place that you have to go. Oh, so that's yeah. the only concern that I have is somebody just sitting right by the you know the entrance. Um, of it, granted, obviously, it would make it a little easier for the infiltrator to, you know, figure out, you know, he's just got to get a quick look up at the target, and if the guy's there, then maybe you can snipe him or, you know, distract him in some way. But also, I feel like it, it, for a really skilled player, if they just kind of guard that that platform core, mm. that might make the gameplay uh, a little a little less intense. So sure. hopefully, there'll be some way to maybe remain let maybe undetected when you mm. invade. Uh, or something like that, or there'll be hopefully there, there might be like you can't stay on the core platform um, for the first X amount of time or something like that. Uh, something like that would definitely be fine, but right. it definitely is cool, and I'm so <clears throat> really, yeah. really excited. Well, what was your yeah, favorite absolutely. part, though, Young, of the uh, of the trailer? What was your what was your like the one thing that was you were like, oh, that was so cool? I don't know. It's just the whole thing just 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 came together so well i mean it, it's the whole watching the whole thing that that really sold it it wasn't just one specific part it's just right. how every little piece came together was what really hyped me up uh, i loved the uh the arm the the wisp uh bionic <laughs> arm i mean that's just i gotta get that yeah. out there um but um yeah i i don't think i have one particular okay. favorite part it's it's a culmination of how everything just came together so perfectly and how everything was just so well presented showing yep. you just the possibilities of this being able to infiltrate basically infinite uh number of different mother bases and uh i thought that was very cool uh, about your concern for the people who, who mm -hmm. might camp on uh the platform core uh, if they do that though they won't be able to do anything they won't be able yep. to collect resources to build up their base they won't be able to do missions they won't be able to do anything. So I think that's the drawback. I, I mean, inside, yeah. like, I mean, once the, the game has started, once mm -hmm. it's like, once you get into somebody's oh, platform, okay. it's built, if they just kind of hang out at the core, but yet you kind of just, uh, you know, triggered my senses there. If they just stay there, they're not going to be able to stop you from fulltoning out their personnel exactly. Exactly. or right. their equipment. Right. So uh, yeah. it will not have to rely on, right. their, on their soldiers. And uh, also it, you'll be really easy to, like, if he has a sniper rifle, boom, headshot. Like yeah. you won't yeah, know where done. he is. Boom. Yeah. Headshot and that's it. You know, you're done. <laughs> right? You got to redeploy. Yeah. So I feel like, I, again, it's it's a culmination of how everything was so well balanced and comes together. I'm gonna have to play it, of course, before I can actually make a final judgment. But right. from what I've seen, everything just looks perfect and awesome. Looks absolutely, and amazing. absolutely. I think, uh, I think for me, the biggest thing that I, that I liked was the size. You could have this huge base, and then I saw a stat on when he was going through the iDroid of he had like a thousand something members. Yeah. Of, oh yeah. Of, yeah. Of the <laughs> and stuff, and he wasn't max level, so mm -hmm. I thought that was the the really cool thing for me. I'm I'm really big on like I'll recruit like individual personnel like in Peace Walker. I I don't auto put anybody anywhere. I I manage everything. Mm -hmm. I like that kind of base management thing. So that for me was the biggest thing. Right. Uh, Rona, what about you, man? I know. Uh, did you did you get to do the uh, live impressions or did you not do that? I didn't get a chance to get around to that. I ended up just watching it off, uh, off stream that day when I finished my stream. Um, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was uh, Metal Gear is esports now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't watched wait to open that Frag Nation's uh, ladder system. I can't wait. I'm going to dominate that. It was great because like I was watching that, and as they were kind of going back and forth about who was going to, you know, actually if the, the invader was going to get away, I was like on pins and needles trying to figure yeah. out who's going to win probably the most intense thing I've seen all week. But oh, outside yeah. of that, I really enjoy the, the subtle aspects they added to it, like the, the JOT arm and stuff like that, considering, and I, I almost shed a, a small tear seeing that because there will not be a Zone of the Enders 3, uh -oh. and that makes me really sad yeah. on the inside. But uh, I, I did think that was pretty awesome. And I did enjoy the fact that there, there's so many different ways that you can either defend your base, or if you're the attacker or the invader, for example, have many different uh, decoys and weapons to use to basically stop the opponent from either taking you out or you getting away, whatever that might be. I think it, it, it opens up a lot of varied options for the way these, these uh, right. situations will go down. And I think that might be one of the, the coolest aspects about it, for me at least. I did like the fact that the bases can be incredibly expansive in so many different ways. And watching the demo where they got to the second half of that and he was just driving in the Jeep down the pathway 
for like several minutes before he actually got to the main base, just yeah. it it threw me for a complete loop about how large these bases can actually be. Yeah. And I'm at a point where I'm like, I don't know if I should stream those things because in the yeah. streaming world, we have this thing called stream sniping. Because there's always a viewer out there that is watching your stream and making sure they find out exactly where you are every time so that they can <laughs> snipe you. So oh, I got to... I got to make sure that I, I put a delay on the stream if I do that so they can't catch me. This thing, man, it's a uh, yeah. thing of esports. But uh, oh, yeah. do you have any concerns, Ronan, for the intruder of, uh, of you know, the mother base portion uh, of, of the gameplay being that it's one on one mm. on all the AI, which by no, by no means is a pushover. I can't, right. I can't uh, begin to commend them for... Uh, their their AI work. It's right. really good. They check in with each other. They check out when security cameras go down, just like in Ground Zeroes. And if Ground Zeroes is any indication, they'll actually kind of form up in little small fire teams. Right. Go out and you know check out these these little things. I, I was actually playing Ground Zeroes the other day, and I got spotted. And I had originally you know based on what I just remembered playing, there was just only gonna be like one or two guys. But they had a full team of four looking for me. Yeah. Yeah. The, so do you think uh, the intruder is at kind of a disadvantage disadvantage here, having to go up against AI and a player? I think in a way they're going to have to be because you're the one that's deciding, okay, I got the like balls the to, ste <laughs> to step up to somebody else's base and try to invade it and steal stuff from it. Mm -hmm. I think that there, there should be a little bit of a, a repercussion in place for doing so. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, this is not to, to slight the AI in any way whatsoever. Uh, granted, I feel like the, the biggest concern you're going to have is the other player basically right. when it when it comes to, <clears throat> to to the combat scenarios because they're the ones that have uh, unpredictable intelligence, of course. So I do think that I mean when you go there, when the person decides they want to invade, they make sure you have to make sure that you you go prepared. You bring everything that you possibly can, whether that be different armor, weapons, whatever that may be. Uh, I think that there there's uh, ways to counter that. Like for example, they showed off the the prototype stealth camo, for example. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, which I thought was really cool. So you, ha you have things like that that you can use in your arsenal to help you perhaps uh, avoid getting noticed or seen by perhaps the AI, for example. Actually, I, I don't think you can use uh, the stealth camo in FOB. Oh, really? Yeah, okay, you that's... <laughs> that you guess you're out of luck. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, but, uh, you, what were you going to say? What, one thing I, I did notice, and uh, this came from the chat, is uh, during the last demo, like Yon talked about, excuse mm -hmm. me, um, we saw, I forget the guy's name, the guy that does the English voiceover. For John Eystone. Yes. Yeah. Um, we saw him doing the, the, the infiltration of during the last year's gameplay trailer, mm. and it didn't seem like the base was alerted like they were in this, this newer one. He fultoned out a couple soldiers, and he fultoned out a crate without mm. anybody really noticing anything. So it could be that maybe that this player's base that we saw earlier has like a early warning detection system where if it I detects like a wormhole, it automatically goes on alert and then you get that timer as opposed to maybe the other one whose base didn't seem as big as this new one. Um, it could be like you can infiltrate those bases without mm. anybody knowing until they actually Yeah, fly. and they, they kind of showed a little bit of like, a, a, I want to say sensors or traps and stuff like that to detect yeah. the player. For example, they, they showed one in a, in a little uh, walkway where yep. they had the sensor there and a camera, but the camera didn't have a gun. It was just a camera on it. So right. perhaps there is a means for the player to invade the base without being detected ahead of time. Yeah. Um, so that that I'm kind of curious to see where that goes as well. That, that, that is a good great point. point. And I, don't, <clears throat> I'm curious on your thoughts on this. I feel like some of the stuff there is just a little too like easy. Like that that <laughs> laser system is right there. You can clearly see it, and he took it out in one shot. Do you think that's going to be an issue, Young? Um. That's a that's a good question. Uh, I mean, you do alert some guards uh, if you shoot them down, and uh, it does delay uh, the guy from uh, you know uh, reaching the the core. Mm. But yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of the security stuff, it it does seem like you have to really find a good placement for them, uh, yeah. because from what I saw, yeah, it's clearly visible that there is a wall of laser, you know, lasers and a freaking camera glowing you know with a green light it's it all yeah. out like, <laughs> like one shot out the laser system granted that that alerts the base but do you think that we'll have the um the option to place these things where we want or do you think it'll just kind of be like if we order lasers it'll just put lasers wherever um, they there there is uh they, they showed it in the um 
in the in the demo that you can place uh now it's not like you, it's like sims where you can place the exact location of you right. know uh, uh, there are very spe specific spots within, uh, so there's like point A, point B, point C, point D, you know, and, and it, it shows you in the menu where they can be placed, and there's like uh, a bunch of them per uh, platform, uh, but there they are specific locations okay. from what I saw. It's just there are a, a variety of options to choose from. Awesome. Well, that's super, super exciting. Do you think, Yom, that you will have an analysis out before the, the game comes out? There is you like got, you got a lot of analysis. <laughs> there's like ten different videos that came out from Gamescom. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'll be able yeah. to analyze all of them uh, by uh, the time the game comes out, uh, especially with some stuff that's coming up. So um, I'll, I'll try to have as much of them as uh, done as possible. But no, I there's no way I'm gonna analyze all of them. So uh, and uh, I mean at, at this point, what's with the game so close to release? I feel like maybe we should just leave some surprises for uh, yeah. when the game launches. <laughs> Exactly. I, uh, I've seen the eight, the eighteen minute little gameplay demo where they did the Heroes Way again. Yeah. Saw that, and I saw the Gamescom demo. Is there any? Did I miss anything else besides those two? Uh, nope. That from what I have seen, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't out of loop because I didn't even get to see that uh, that uh, little gameplay demo until mm -hmm. late last yeah. night. So. Yeah. Um, super, super excited! Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. He showed off some yeah. a new, a new way to tackle that mission. Um, but I think that will wrap up our post show, guys. We've got another interview next week with uh, Heather Haley, which I'm super excited to talk to a paramedic, uh, Dr. Clark, about uh, her work in uh, Metal Gear Solid Three, and maybe see if she yeah. might be in this new game. In Question some... one: Are you an MGS five? <laughs> Tell us secrets now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to her. I'm friends with her on Facebook, and she seems like a, an incredibly lovely lady, so yes. I'm yeah, super excited to talk to her. She always posts them like cute dog videos and stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> can't, uh, can't wait to see how she feels about being in Metal Gear uh, when she seems like a, such a peace-loving lady. Um, so definitely excited for that. Uh, Ronan, final thoughts, goodbyes, and anything coming up for you, buddy? Uh, right now, for me, I, I, in fact, uh, I'm going to be starting the, the Metal Gear month, quote unquote, uh, on Monday next week. Hey. So I'll be playing through Metal Gear Solid 1 on Monday. I don't know how long we go on that day. I guess it's until I feel like I want to stop. So no, no, nothing set in stone on that one just yet. But yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll kick off the, the Metal Probably Gear month. i game in one day. I beat it, in, I beat it oh, the, yeah. the night before the David Hayter stream. So. <laughs> yeah, so it's, that, that'll, that'll happen then. I'll probably get past that, depending on how I pace it out during the week. Uh, this week, I don't know for sure if there's going to be a podcast. I know my co-host said they're going to be going off on vacation pretty soon here. So um, I'll keep you guys posted on that. But uh, that, that was a fantastic interview, by the way, with Guy. That was like me. <laughs> I, I can be a ninja. There you go. I thought you already were. What happened? <laughs> Do I look like a ninja? They will spot me in the nighttime. I mean, I mean, if you... <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're white enough. You're Daylight white, white infiltration enough. only. <laughs> I, I, the sun. I mean, if there was snow outside, I'm sure you'd disappear. <laughs> Right, snow, snow light infiltration. I'm at a disadvantage. I'm just yellow, you know. It's, <laughs> but, it's well, not, you, you know. Afghanistan's a big place. Yeah, that's true. That's the true. desert. That's true. That's where I fit. The desert. You know, it's we got the trail here. Around. All kinds of environment. <laughs> we got it covered, guys. Yeah, it's we fine. got it. So possibly, maybe no podcast. You'll give. Yeah, it I, I still got to get the previous one posted because, like I said, I ran into issues with Windows 10 and my editing software. So I'll. I'm going to try to have that posted soon. Just no guarantees on when just yet. But uh, yeah, that that's great. Like like I said, the interview was fantastic. I didn't really realize how often he had to go into really dark places yeah. to draw from for his character. That that was. That's. I think that's really cool, but I think it's also kind of scary at the same time. It is kind of scary and a little depressing at the same time, but, but, but when you look at Silent Hill as a whole, they're all really depressing games. Yes, they are. When, when you look at them. <laughs> like, I've played horror games before and just been like, all right, that was a cool horror game, but Silent Hill makes you, makes you feel in the heart. Yeah, you, you really feel something that sticks with you after a while. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that was a lot of fun, and props to him for actually being able to sit there and talk about that, considering yeah. a lot of the things he brought up during the interview, which I know was probably hard to talk about in some sense. Um, I know I watched his previous interview with another person here on Hitbox that interviewed him. Really? And he, yeah, there's, yeah, he did an interview. Uh, there's a Let's Play on YouTube with uh, another guy he yeah. did an interview with on Hitbox um, <laughs> that I watched yesterday, in fact. This is for this interview. And he, he touched on that subject a little bit during that, uh, mm. that video. 
But uh, he didn't go into it as deep as we did for this one. I kind of felt bad because I'm like, this keeps going back into that yeah. place. And I keep asking him those questions. Maybe I should just stop asking questions. <laughs> you seemed happy <laughs> no, to that, talk about it, though. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that was nice. But as always, guys, thank you all for watching this, this exciting episode of The Codec. That was really informative. And uh, it was great to get his opinions on that. So uh, as always, guys, we will see you on the next episode. Or I will see you on the next episode. So thanks for tuning in. You guys, stay classy. Stay sharp. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And I'll see you next time. All right. Thank you so much, Ronan. And, and yeah, mm -hmm. guys, like I said, uh, during the last episode of the Codec here on, on Wednesday, check us out on uh, Twitter and Facebook. It's at the underscore Codec on Twitter. And it's the Codec on Facebook. There's also a podcast garden link that I've been putting up if you're looking to watch these interviews on uh, MP3 format. And it is the only way that you can see all of the interviews in one place. Uh, some interviews are uh, on Yong's channel. Some are on my channel. Some are... Uh, not anywhere but uploaded here. Uh, so if you want to see every episode, even the ones before we were the codec, um, that's the place where you can check all of those out. And um, other than that, we have, like I said, Heather Haley this coming up week. Um, and uh, we've got some, some fun things planned for you guys um, in the following weeks after that. So make sure you keep up to date. Stay tuned for all that kind of nonsense. And um, if you haven't, Go watch the intro for the, uh, I think it's episode 10 of the Codec, and watch Yong say, Skullface, blah, 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 blah. That's my favorite <laughs> intro ever. My beautiful Texan accent, you know. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think it's only fitting since we talked a little bit about Troy Baker. <laughs> we all go back and remember that oh, episode. Boy. Which is much my favorite intro of all time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with that, I would like to uh, to thank everybody for coming again. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. There's a blue button. It looks like a little box if you're not already subscribed. Go ahead and click that subscribe uh, follow button so you can be updated on when we go live here for these interviews. Um, we definitely appreciate all the support. And there is a green subscribe button if you'd like to subscribe. Absolutely. And uh, as my boss has pointed out, I... I tend to forget to do this a lot, but I'd, lo I'd like to thank our, our sponsors. I, I really I really do appreciate them. I just forget sometimes to mention it. Their logos are right here to my left and to my right. Uh, we've got BattleBox, Hitbox, Control Freak, and Frag Nation in Steel Series. Thank you guys so much. If I don't give you the credit that you deserve, sponsors, we love you. We, we we're wearing your stuff. We talk about you. Just I forget sometimes. So don't Long hate. time. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> Love you long time. Long time. Right. So with that said, I'd like to uh, to switch it over to Young. Any uh, any last words, anything going on for you, Young? When's our next analysis, please? Um, next analysis should be either, uh, I think tomorrow is going to be the next. I'm, I'm analyzing the um, the short, uh, the, the Gamescom 2015 trailer. That one's a pretty short one to analyze, so that didn't take me too long. So gameplay stuff, stuff yeah the, the gameplay stuff though man uh it's it's a lot of gameplay so i'll see what i can do but um it, it, i don't know if i can get all of them out in time so i'll do as much as i can we need uh, like one more good analysis before the game launches this is one give us one one yeah. more good i mean it's just the e3 2015 trailer was that that was like the pinnacle of kojima trailers so i don't know if i can ever top that one you know that was an hour and 40 something minutes on a yeah. six minute footage i mean i i <laughs> i lost it um but um anyway yeah so i i'll try to release as many um analysis as i can just don't expect all of them uh, in time uh and i've got the retrospective going on and i'm discovering some new things myself just looking back at some of the stuff uh, it's really cool just how many hints there, there really were about the game, uh, looking back at all the tweets and the things when Kojima's tweet wasn't as popular. Uh, so I'll talk all about that. Love and, that. Um, the perspective thing is great, man, by the way. I oh, don't cool. mean to cut you off, but I just wanted to say that, that I thought that was a great idea. And, yes, um, it is. Thank you. During your last retrospective, we actually got to see what Big Boss would look like if he still had a left arm. Yeah, I forgot. I totally even forgot to mention that, which I'll talk about today, uh, tonight. <laughs> But um, yeah, uh, I, I think, I don't know if they did that to avoid spoilers or if that wasn't in the books, uh, in the plans back then, if Big Boss wasn't supposed to have a prosthetic arm. Uh, one of those two things. But um, it's cool that he does now because we get stuff like the Jehudi arm and the rocket, <laughs> the punch and the and all the other things. So, you know, I'm happy they made that change. But um, yeah, uh, I survived. I haven't slept in 20-something hours. Uh, 
caffeine's wearing off, so this is a good time to end. You know, it's, it's <laughs> at a point where I'm starting to get dizzy now, and I'm mm -hmm. feeling kind of like an out-of-body out experience, that kind of thing. That's how tired I am right now, so I should probably end yeah. this uh, episode of the Codec. Thank you for tuning in. I had a blast. Uh, awesome job again, you too. And be sure, you guys, to subscribe to uh, the Nation Fusion Hitbox to be updated on these live streams and interviews. And uh, check us all out. Uh, we all do awesome stuff. So with that, I will see you guys next time. Yong out. Bye.